Hi, I'm Mr. G, and we are talking about Drew methods. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the reasons for methods, that is code reuse and code readability. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with our method main. Add some brackets there. We'll uh, go ahead and drop a Drew in here. We'll say Drew Bob equals new Drew. And um, one of the things that we noticed in the uh, Jeru action methods is that um, a Jeru cannot turn around, or we can't tell it directly to turn around. That you can do two two left turns or two right turns, but there's no way that we can literally just say Bob dot turn around, um, unless we make that a new command, and that's what we're going to do here in a second. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, via the Drew methods. So if you look over here on this tab, we'll click up here where it says Drew methods. <clears throat> and this is where we're going to write our custom methods, our custom actions. Now if you need some help on that, you can click over here on uh, Help and then Language Summary. And if you look across here, one of these says Methods. There it is. So uh, we know how the method main works out but our user defined Drew methods uh, we're going to have to have the keyword method then um, an identifier so a name of our method or of our action then the parentheses and then open squiggle bracket close squiggle bracket and then here's the body and there's some extra information here that you feel free to read through that so uh, we will write method turn around um, and open print a close print then some of those squiggle brackets and then one of the neat things about methods is you don't actually have to write Bob dot because as we'll see in a minute uh, this method can be used on multiple uh, different Jeru's so it's a Jeru independent so here we go we're gonna make um, our Jeru uh, turn around by turning left two times so turn left and turn left that's it. That should work properly. I'll go to the main method and uh, I'll double check a couple of things. First off, I want to make sure that I spelled turnaround the same. If I'm not sure, I can always go ahead and uh, copy that and I'll uh, paste that there. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, as always in Jeru, uh, or specifically in Java and C++ and C Sharp, um, uh, capitalization matters. Um, you'll notice that I did something kind of interesting. I made the first letter lowercase, but then in the subsequent words here, I made them uppercase. Um, that um, style, that convention is called camel case, because it's kind of like a hump there in the middle of the uppercase letter. Anyway, that's that's pretty standard. Uh, something else that is standard is to write a comment above here um, describing what the method does. And we'll just say, this method turns the Jeru around. Um, you also normally want to have a, um, a name for your method that matches what you're actually going to be doing. So uh, let's go ahead and see if this will uh, run. So I'm going to just kind of step through this one thing at a time. Um, when we get to this part right here, this this code which says Bob Turnaround, you'll see the, uh, the execution uh, pointer is going to actually jump over to the Drew methods. And here's the turnaround method. And turn left, we saw Bob turned around, turn left right there. And then he turned again. And then it comes back here. And we have completed running the program. Great, we've just written our first method. Uh, if we wanted to, we could run through really fast and we'll see, it'll jump over here, then jumps back. Um, what I mentioned a minute ago is that we can actually have this code uh, run for different Jeru's. So I'll say Jeru Su equals new Jeru. And uh, we'll want to put Su at a different location. We'll put her at 5, 6. And I could say Su dot turn around. And I'll just uh, have this run all the way through. We look at Su and she turns around. So uh, one common mistake the students do is they, they when they're writing the methods, they tend to put the Jeru name in front of here, but you do not need to, and actually, uh, if you did, there would be an error. So, um, and that is promoting our idea of code reuse, um, and also a little bit of our code readability. Um, but I want to do something now is um, 
kind of show you another reason uh, for uh, having uh, methods here. And let's say that we wanted, uh, we'll say Sue, to make a, uh, a square, I don't know, some sort of a plant, a square, uh, flowers or whatever. Um, and so if we were to think through all the steps, we could have her uh, plant maybe four uh, you know, plant hop, plant hop, plant hop, and then turn left, and then do literally the same thing, plant hop, plant hop, plant hop, and then turn again, plant hop, plant hop, plant hop, and turn again. So we definitely would have a lot of those things um, over and over again. So what we can think about, that is we can actually think about making a method that would uh, take care of some of that. So we'll call this uh, method the plant hop method. And... Uh, you know, we'll call it and uh, put an open bracket there. And we're just going to say plant and then hop. And we're going to have that execute four times. So just copy and pasting there. I think if I've got a way of resetting this, I might be able to format that. Control Shift F. There we go. Plant hop, plant hop. Great. Um, I'm going to verify that this is going to work. So I'm going to uh, <clears throat> go back here, delete these, and I'll say sue.plant hop. In order for this to be effective, she'll need some uh, seeds here, so I'll just put 50 there. That would be plenty. Let's see if this works. Plant hop, plant hop, plant hop. Okay, great. So. Um, well, I don't have her turning around anymore, so at this point I'd want her to maybe uh, turn right and then basically do that same thing again. So let's go ahead and reset the scenario. And so I could say sue.turn right, and then I'm going to have her plant and hop again. So she does that, and then she turns right and does the plant hop again. And that's great. And if I wanted to, and uh, of course I do, I'm going to just copy that um, a few more times. So I have her turn right. So this should have her planting one, two, three, four sides. We might increase the execution speed there. Okay. And so she's plant and hopped and then turn right and then done the same thing over and over again. So uh, we can definitely see some advantages here. I didn't have to write uh, this code um, multiple times. I just had to write it once and then I called it uh, multiple times. Uh, one of the things though that maybe we could um, do, and we got all kinds of options here, but we could, uh, maybe we wanted to group this these two commands here into a um, maybe a plant and turn right or something like that. So we could we could kind of try to make this a little bit more readable. Um, but one thing that I could do is I can look and see I can see all this and I'd say wow this um, there's there's definitely some repeat here. I'd really like to just have all of this condensed into just maybe plant a square, and um, and I can do that. So what actually I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these. Actually, I don't even need to copy all of them. I'll just copy those first two lines. And I'm going to make a new method over here. And I'm going to do something really interesting. I'm going to say uh, method plant square. And I've got um, sue.planthop. Instead, I'm just going to say plant hop. And then I'm going to say turn right. So this is interesting. From this method right here, I can actually call this method. And so uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then um, I can, rather than just doing it once, I'll do it two, three, four times. And then we'll do a reset of everything and I'll actually format that. So plant hop turn right, plant hop turn right. It's the exact same code that I have over here, but now 
I don't need all of those items. I'm just going to say sue dot, and I'll make sure I get my uh, name right, plant square. So I'll copy that, paste it here. Now I, you do need to have those parentheses there. And uh, what we'll see is that when this uh, line gets executed, uh, the Drew program pointer is going to go over here to the plant square, and it'll start to execute this line. But when it executes this line, it's going to jump up to the plant top and then execute all of those. And then it will jump back here to the turn right, and then it will go to this plant hop method call again, and uh, kind of go back and forth between these two. And then when, when it gets to the very bottom here, it's all finished, then it'll kick back to the main method. But, um, and before we just run all that, the thing is, is that this allows me at this point to do really high level programming. I just say sue, plant the square. And then I let the methods kind of figure out all the details, even though I happen to be the one who wrote those methods. So I'm going to run this step by step and then I'll uh, speed it up as I sue plant the square. Jumps down here to the plant square method. And then the first line there is a plant hop and you can see now we're in the plant hop method and we're executing line by line by line by line there. And then turning right, going to the plant hop method executing all those lines. And I'm just going to run the program continuously from here. And you can see that Sue did that. And, uh, you know, just like Sue, we could give Bob some seeds and we could now say Bob dot plant square. We'll go ahead and run that. And we see she plants a square and he plants a square. And that's great. They're both plant squares. Uh, it's real easy. Uh, to uh, to program here and, and I can have my main method be very uh, high level uh, big picture type code all right so uh, just a reminder uh, things that we looked at was uh, methods and how to create a user defined method we talked about um, the purpose behind methods that was code reuse and code readability and uh, we saw that Jeroo methods um, are not particular to any uh, individual Jeroo. They can be called on by multiple Jeroos. All right. Uh, good luck programming your methods, and I'll see you next time.